The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all the ships at sea. Thank you so much for joining us on another exciting Page One Power webinar. Uh, in these shows, we typically explore a single topic relevant to the online search and marketing community, including your questions uh, from the audience. And today is no different. Uh, our topic centers around link building and more specifically, frequently asked questions about link building and other, uh, other parts of SEO that you want to uh, uh, be doing for your site and for your business. Uh, please follow us on Twitter at, at page one power and follow the global webinar conversation with this webinar's hashtag, hashtag P1P webinar. That's P1P webinar, the number one. Um, but before we dive into it, let's introduce our panel, shall we? As always, I am Colin Eggleston, your friendly neighborhood marketing events coordinator here at Page One Power. And joining us today is our very own Colby Stream, a project manager here at Page One Power and a link building expert to boot. Thank you so much for joining us today, Colby. Hey, thanks for having me, Colin. Really appreciate it. Yeah, we're really happy to have you here. And, and this conversation is, is kind of an ongoing one uh, as a company, as a, as a link building uh, a firm, we do get a lot of questions from clients, from the general public at trade shows, emails. Um, so I think these frequently asked questions, I think addressing these, uh, I think is, is kind of a, a really important kind of piece of content to kind of get out there and to kind of help, help people with these questions. Um, and uh, so just to kind of start things off, uh, Colby, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, about how you got started in the uh, link building uh, SEO industry? Yeah, uh, I joined Page One Power back in our infancy. It was uh, August, September-ish, 2011. Uh, back then, we were hiring writers, and I had a writing background and uh, joined Page One Power at that time. I was a uh, writing link builder, what you might call a guest poster. And uh, a few months of doing that, I moved into a, a management position where I oversaw the, the guest posting team. Uh, at Page One Power, and uh, since then have moved throughout the company from uh, managing link builders to working with clients and setting strategy and, and working on direction and uh, tracking the results of our campaigns. So uh, nowadays, going back about three years, I spend my time uh, talking with clients, answering many of the questions that we will be going through today and uh, working on that strategy component, working on that results and metrics component, and uh, just helping our clients get good links and, and results from those links. You know, link building in, in, in at the best of times is a very complicated uh, process that, that kind of requires many steps. It requires a large um, kind of uh, underpinning of uh, undergirding of knowledge. Um, and, and so, uh, yeah, I think that it, it's something that it's no wonder we see a lot of these questions, uh, you know, pretty frequently uh, being uh, being posed to us by our audience and, and through people that want to learn more about link building um, as well. There's just a lot to learn. Uh, speaking of which, uh, please submit your questions uh, throughout the broadcast today. Um, we will be, we do have some some uh, kind of preloaded questions kind of lined up, the questions that we see a lot, that we encounter a lot. Um, and uh, and But we also want to uh, take your questions live here on the air today. Um, so please uh, submit those questions throughout the broadcast so that we can answer those um, after we get through our handful of uh, pre-loaded questions. Um, so we're kind of excited uh, to get through to that. So uh, again, just want to thank everybody for, uh, for your time today. We want to make sure that you uh, learn a lot today. So we will just dive right into it. So we have some frequently ask questions. So this number one here. <laughs> All right. So Colby, let's just start. Let's get right into it. Let's just wade right into the weeds here with this one. Um, uh, Colby, how do I know what site is a good one for me to get a link from? Yeah. Uh, Colin, as you know, <laughs> we were talking about this before the broadcast and uh, is really my least favorite question, but it's it's such a necessary one, which is why we're we're addressing it. Um, so I was talking with a prospect about this this morning, and uh, you know what I said, and what I'll say to you is that if I could give you a checklist around like these are all the things that you need to check mark off to make sure that a, a link is a good one for you to get, um, link building would be a a something that a program could do. And uh, it's just simply not that way. That's why we do human-based link building here at Page One Power. Uh, that said, there are a lot of things that we look at. Um, my the first thing that I think you should look at is just to say like, why does this site exist? 
And you're asking that question in a couple different contexts. There's the context of, um, does this site exist to provide like a real value to users? Or does it really look like they just threw up some copy so that they could throw some ads on the site and make a little bit of money? Uh, there's the audience question when you say that, and that's where it comes into um, more relevant to you. So is the audience they're targeting an audience that uh, intersects with who you would be targeting? Not that it has to match up um, exactly, but that there is a connection that if someone went from site A to your site, it makes sense. And then uh, there are the metrics you want to look at. And I don't think there's just one metric that you can look at. There are a, a number that, that I like to um, take into consideration. DA, domain authority, as by Moz, I think it's a good real quick gut check. Um, if it's eight domain authority, you probably just want to stay away. If it's 50, 60, 70 domain authority, it's probably, although not necessarily, a really good site. And then you've got your nuances in between. I really favor uh, citation flow and trust flow um, at the domain and at the page level and what the ratio is between them. So if your trust flow is higher than your citation flow, that's a really good thing. If your uh, citation flow outranks your trust flow by a, a you know, 3x, 4x, you probably want to start thinking, you know, does this have a, links to the domain, but they're really low quality. And so I like to look at those to, to make a determination. Um, and then uh, similar web is one I've added very recently, just because you can see sort how much traffic it's getting roughly, but also where it's coming from. Is it getting just a lot of direct traffic or is it getting a, a lot of social or sorry, um, search traffic as well? That can give you an idea of like, you know, if it's just a bunch of direct traffic, well, they're probably not doing really well in the search space. But if they're getting a lot of search traffic that gives you an idea hey they're probably ranking and doing very well um, and then to go back to just the site itself to, to pay attention to how it feels uh, sometimes we look at sites and um, there's a, a an ad on the, the left side banner is an ad at the top there's an ad on the right side banner there's an ad in the middle of the copy those are sites we generally want to stay away from because again why is this site existing well it's not really providing great content it's just throwing up a bunch of ads to make a little bit of money so um, that is not a, like I said, a checklist answer, but it gives you an idea of all the different things you want to think about. I think the most important thing is, does it make sense to the user? Will the jump from that site to your site make sense? And then I think the next thing is, does it have enough link equity to justify getting it? And you'll make that decision. You'll get a feel for it based on citation flow, trust flow, DA, and uh, what those metrics are in your niche and uh, how that relates to, to the, the metrics in your niche. And I'll just kind of, uh, and, and I fully echo all that as well, and I'll just kind of uh, uh, put a button on this with uh, one of my favorite sayings, uh, kind of when I'm link building. I can't remember if this is a, if this is a Joe Oliver saying or this is a, a John or Zach Ball saying um, uh, or, or maybe someone else. But the, uh, the, the quote is, would it make sense if one of your customers saw your link on that site? So like, you know, if, if you're a coffee, you, you know, if you're an organic fair trade coffee company, um, and you get a link on a, you know, on an auto racing blog or something like that, like a car racing blog or a horse racing blog, would the coffee company's audience, and they saw your link on there, uh, would that really make sense to them? Um, or, you know, as opposed to maybe on like a, um, you know, like a, a, a business blog or, or a, um, you know, like a local, you know, business, you know, local, uh, uh, you know, entrepreneurial business blog, something like that, where it's like more, okay, I can see your coffee, uh, your coffee shop link there. So um, if it makes sense that your link is on that site, then that's probably a good, uh, probably a good uh, indicator. Yeah. I can't remember who originally said that, but I like that. Yeah, that's a good a one. Um, and I think that the hard part that people really struggle with in there isn't the coffee site on an auto blog. That totally doesn't make sense. But it's that, <laughs> it's that nuance in between. And yes. I think it really is like, yes. as I'm reading this article, as I'm on this page, um, does the context make sense that when the, the audience clicks from A to B, like there is a, they expect to find what they're clicking on. So. Yep. All right. So moving on. Um, so this actually was submitted to us recently. So we have a we actually have an exciting new uh, feature on the site that I just want to tell people about. Uh, if you go to pageonepower.com forward slash ask an expert, uh, just like it is in the URL on the page there, um, then you can actually submit a question to us. Um, through uh, through that uh, question box there, and uh, and then we will answer it. We will get back to you on it. So one of these questions, uh, one question that was uh, submitted to us uh, uh, kind of quite frequently is, what is a number? <laughs> what is a good number of links 
these days. And I assume links to maybe move me ahead of my competition, get me better visibility, all those things. Yeah. Uh, this one's almost impossible to answer devoid of context. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop the um, slide for a second, and I'm just going to do a search to show the, the context here that I'm talking about. Uh, so we're just going to um, how to compost. We're going to look this up. And let's pretend that we had an article and we wanted to rank for how to compost. So we were trying to figure out how many links do I need to be competitive uh, in this space. And I'm just going to pull up the top five results. And we're going to use Majestic to see how many links are to each of these pages. So this one's it's uh, about 300 links, 85 referring domains. Uh, the next one, which is WikiHow, you'll notice is much different. It's got one referring domain, and yet it's ranking in the second spot. If we go to spot number three, uh, what we see here is that this one's got 722 referring domains. Um, now it's a home page, so it's got more you know, your, uh, links directly to the URL. Um, and it's an exact match domain. And then number four is uh, uh, 758. So uh, we've got again more links. Notice that the ones uh, actually they have less, they have more links, but they're ranking uh, farther down. And then we've got this fourth one that is uh, it's a bit of a false positive because it is ranking number five, but they also got spot zero. Um, if we go back to that, uh, so there's 400. If we go back to that, let me see. I'll just open it real quick. I think I can. Uh, we can see it up here at spot zero is that uh, organic life one. So if we were to look at this and say, how many links do I need to move ahead of this? We would say, first of all, how many links does your domain have, and how um, you know how relevant is your domain to this? Because we see some that are exact match, and we see WikiHow, which is a pretty powerful domain, um, has a, a a lot of links. Um, and see it right there, but they've only got one to the page. And so what we can say is that more powerful domains, at least what we're looking at here, domains that have more links, they're probably going to need less links directly to the page. And then we've got these that, uh, you know, maybe is a less powerful domain. They've got less links overall, but more links to the page. And so uh, what I can say here is we need somewhere between one and 800 links, <laughs> right? <laughs> no. In our experience, what we can say is if we've done our research, we've looked at these and we've said, hey, um, we know what sort of content we need to build. And we, if we build some very relevant links, uh, we can build 10 links to this page and see what the impact is. But we also know in this space, we're probably going to need more than 10 links because of how competitive it is. But this is the process that we would go through to say, um, you know, here's uh, here's how many links we would need to build. Um, I wish I had pulled up the article before, but uh, Andrew Dennis, who I know is listening to this broadcast, um, he wrote an article about how to identify a space and how to optimize and how to know how many links to build to that. Uh, maybe we'll see if we can find that later and share it out. But um, that's the sort of process you want to go through just like this. So there's not just one answer. You need X number of links. It's very dependent upon the space and the content. And that's the process I, I, we go through when we're looking at building links for clients to identify what that number is going to be. Yeah, and I think that that's such a tough question, but I think it, it is um, it, it kind of dovetails into a, kind of a core um, kind of a, a core aspect of link building as a process and link building as a service and a part of your online, um, you, kind of a part of your online marketing landscape is that um, you don't just get to a point and say, okay, I want link building until I get 10 links and then I stop and then we're good forever and let's just pack it up and go home. We already won, right? It's part of a, it's part of an ongoing process. So it's just, you just need link building. You need you know, a, a robust uh, online ca marketing campaign. Um, and y that's just always going to be a given. And so always be building new, fresh new links, always be kind of working on that next, um, on that next big piece of content. Um, and that's really to kind of help hone that competitive edge. Yeah, philosophically, when you take it to that level, um, yeah, you should always be building links because your competitors are gonna be doing the same thing. Yeah, and if they're not, then great. <laughs> All right, so this is a longer mm, one, yeah. um, so we don't have to read the whole thing, but kind of talks about um, kind of talks about how to approach outreach and the different types of clients that we that we typically work with, and especially a lot. I know a lot of us are agencies um, that may have a wide variety of clients um, that we do link building for and outreach for. So there's some clients that have better content or more content, or some clients that are more niche and more narrow. Um, so kind of how 
how do you kind of approach this, this Colby, those uh, different aspects? Yeah. Uh, so in terms of outreach, I, I can say that uh, I read a lot of outreach that Pedro and Power Link Builders send, and I see actually both ends of the spectrum that convert, um, where it's some that are like really short, lots of mass outreach, and uh, then you see the other side where it's like a little longer, much more targeted, and it, it depends a little bit as the, the question the questioner has indicated here, it depends a little bit on who the clients are and um, you know what they have at their disposal. Is mass approach still essential for some? Um, yeah, absolutely, depending on the, the, the niche and depending on how many prospects you have at your disposal. So let's say that um, you know, someone comes in with a calculator, uh, you know, we see this a lot like a loan calculator, but it's a, a step ahead of the rest in terms of what everyone else offers. Well, we can go and backlink everybody who has a, a link to their calculator. There's going to be some element of mass approach, but we also want to personalize it and make it targeted to, um, uh, to you know, let's say here's the betterness that this brings, the betterness. Here's the, <laughs> the USP that this uh, loan calculator brings to uh, your site and against those others. Now, here's what I can say. Um, I was doing this the other day. I actually got access to, uh, you know, a client had, you know, hey, we accept submissions to our site. And so I got access to their inbox where people could submit contributions, you know, guest post contributions. And uh, so I just got to read through the submissions from the last couple months that they hadn't looked at. And it was really a lot of fun because I realized as I was looking through uh, these outreach emails, I, I got a real feel for which ones I instantly just sort of deleted from the inbox <laughs> and which ones I wanted to look into um, more. And so here's my suggestion. If you're not an agency, if you own a website, uh, maybe set up one of those, uh, not necessarily because you want to publish a guest post, although maybe you do, but to, to read what the different outreaches look like and which ones pique your attention in your niche. So you might get a feel for, you know, I'm in this niche. These are the things that, as an expert in that niche, uh, enticed me to read people's emails, and you can get a, a feel for then how you should write your emails. Um, if you're at the agency level, maybe ask your client if you can run that sort of a test to get a feel for, uh, you know, what the emails look like and optimize your own emails. That being said, uh, to sort of put a, a bow on this question, um, I would always veer towards targeted, and that doesn't always mean short, but I'd go sort uh, for targeted, and uh, here's why you should link to this, and I'd put much more time into that than to the mass approach, but if you get into a rhythm to say, hey, I know that if I target my emails in this way, then you can scale that up. Great. Um, I mean, we could we could spend several hours on, on this question alone. Um, so I think that's a pretty good button. We'll just move on to the next one. If someone does want to, if someone wants a more specific, like a template, um, I, if, I, I encourage you to refer back to a couple webinars uh, ago, one where I did, where I talked about broken link building. Um, and I, it, that's a good starter tactic for link building. Um, it's pretty common, and um, and I included some templates, um, some templates in there for outreach. Uh, that's that's also a good baseline to kind of start with. So I refer you to that as well. Uh, question, next question. I saw an ad that promised me five thousand high DA links for fifty bucks. Should I buy it? Uh, uh, only if you want to ruin your sites. <laughs> um, yeah, you get what you pay for. So I'm going to take down the slide for a second again and uh, just put up this article. You may have seen this. Um, Perrin posted this uh, back in June. I just heard about it about a week ago. But uh, what they did at, over at Authority Hacker is they actually tested uh, five different link building services. And these are ones that uh, weren't even like uh, 5,000 high DA links for 50 bucks. These were, uh, I don't know, $300 uh, dollar range, 350 and down. And... He just talks about, let's see, that one's 126. He just talks about the sort of the surprise of uh, what he was getting even for that cost and how hard it was to get a good link at that uh, price point. And uh, it's just like absolutely not. You get what you pay for. And uh, if you're getting 50, uh, 5,000 IDA links for 50 bucks, um, you're going to be building a new site in three months because uh, <laughs> that one's... I don't know. They say they don't penalize you anymore, right? They yeah, maybe in a them. post. Yeah. So I guess it probably wouldn't hurt you nowadays. But uh. I think it would just it just be a colossal waste of money. And then, you know, think of the think of the kind of the third 
the kind of the tertiary ramifications. So if you get a couple of these packages, maybe 10, 20,000, 30,000 links, um, and, but only maybe, maybe the, they're from a few, you know, referring domains, I mean, there's not a lot of referring domains, then suddenly someone is looking at your backlink profile and maybe they want to interact with you as like a business partner. And they're looking at all your, uh, look, looking at all these spammy links that you've been buying and that might cost you some business. Um, you know, if, if somebody is looking there or, or, or maybe a link builder or someone wants to partner with you in some other way and they see a whole bunch of spammy bot links in your perf profile that could have other you know other ramifications than just you know rankings um it, it would just kind of something that uh people might not might not think about right off the bat uh so stay away from that please uh, great and here is uh, uh here's another one kind of talking about uh kind of talking about the content side so one of the you know one of the linchpins of of uh you know of good link building is having good content, right? Um, and, and a site that is robust and has a lot of really great content. So it's difficult, it ups the difficulty level when a client does not have a lot of kind of dynamic or fresh or, or amazing content necessarily. How do we kind of approach that? How do we build to that? Yeah, you, you may not be able to, let me just state that up front. Mm -hmm. uh, like these are very narrow parameters, what is described in this question. So you may not be able to, However, there are a couple of scenarios uh, that, that may allow you to build links. The first is uh, what we usually call fresh mention. Some people call brand mention. So if the product or the technology or the company or the CEO or the COO or, or somebody is mentioned in the news, um, right, you can reach out and say, hey, uh, thank you for mentioning so-and-so. We'd really appreciate it if you would link over to our site so users can see who we are. You might be able to get some links that way, although I find that um, by and large, uh, you know, that works for like eh, maybe 20% of companies. So the other 80% that are more niche uh, directed, you that tactic doesn't always work. Uh, then you have two other routes you could potentially go down. Uh, one, depending on the product, the technology, um, you might be able to get some some resource links, right? But ideally, your product, your technology, it, it solves somebody's problems. So if there are pages out there that says, hey, this thing, you know, here are solutions to this problem or people who are looking for solutions like this, you might be able to get at, reach out and get a link, but you're not gonna be able to get very many because the opportunities are gonna be so narrow and the resistance to getting that link is gonna be much higher. They're gonna look at it, um, you know, as advertising and ask you to pay them. Um, uh, another avenue down that way might be uh, niche directories, something where uh, it's specifically about your product and so you can get some links that way. Uh, you get a little bit of link value out of that. The other bonus is if people are using that site, they should be, uh, they may find your product, your technology. The other opportunity is in writing guest posts, um, but you're, you're gonna run into the same uh, problem that the, the context in which you can link to a product uh, naturally is that there just aren't that many opportunities. You can only write an article in so many ways um, that will keep it natural where you're not rewriting what you've written before. And so in these scenarios, uh, you know, if you're stuck in this scenario, probably what you need to do is explain um, this to your client or to your boss and then say, here's what we can do in the very short term, but if we wanna make this sustainable, we have to think about building some form of content. So you make it work in the very short term, three months, maybe six months at the very outside, but if you really wanna build sustainable value, you're going to have to have some form of content. Yeah, I think one of the most important steps in link building is content building and uh, kind of understanding the relationship between the two. Um, and yeah, very, very well said, Colby. I think that's, those are some really good points to kind of, uh, uh, to kind of go with that. And it's not easy. It does, the, the degree of difficulty does uh, increase once we, once the kind of the, there's a little bit less content or, or, or whatnot, so. Uh, okay, this is an interesting one. Um, so let's talk about nofollow links. Uh, are nofollow links bad? And should I avoid them at all costs? They are not bad. You should not <laughs> avoid them at all costs. Um, I saw, I have not had a chance to watch it yet, although I did look at the screen cap, but I saw that Rand Fishkin did a, uh, a, a whiteboard Friday, I think just, uh, yeah, October 6th, that addressed uh, no follows and how they can be useful. Um, and there are lots of value. There's also, this is going back a couple of years, but um, I saw some studies that talked about 
um, you know, the higher authority a, a domain, so think about wiki and those sort of things, um, the better chance of a nofollow link may be passing a little bit of value. Um, but when we're thinking about what a link is beyond just passing link equity, you think about people being able to click on it and, and go places and drive a little bit of traffic that way, uh, you know, those links bring value as well. So um, I wouldn't uh, say they're bad because they're not, and I wouldn't avoid them at all costs. I will say that when Page One Power is building links, uh, we aim to get do follow links. Uh, occasionally a no follow link will come in on a campaign and uh, we report that it's completely natural to have those. Um, but when we're doing link building, we do try to go after do follow just because that's the, the purpose of them. So um, we avoid them when we can, but when they come in, they're not bad. Uh, they do add value. There is, they are part of a natural backlink portfolio. They can bring other things uh, to the campaign. But uh, um, it just boggles my mind when people will say, oh, it's no follow links. You avoid them at all costs. Or when people no follow external links from their site. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that drives me nuts too. I think Nicholas uh, uh, Chimonis here at our company wrote a post on SEM Russia a year or two back about that. But um, yeah, no follow links are just part of the internet. And uh, uh, I'll say it again, they're absolutely not bad. You should not avoid them at all costs. But uh, yeah, maybe don't design a campaign where you just go out and get no follow links as well. Right. No, that's uh, that's exactly right. And, um, you know, and I've seen, uh, you know, a, when an older a project manager here, a former colleague of ours, um, actually was working on a local site helping a, helping a, a group with their campaign. And pretty much with five no follows and I think two do follows, they were able to really increase their local rankings uh, in a very short amount of time um, with the majority of their links being no follow. So, so you're um, saying like there it was more about the DNAP, but the links brought something to the table? I think it, I think it was a combination of that too. And it was, uh, yeah, and the no, after, the, uh, after some no follow, thing, uh, no follow links, uh, there was some significant improvement. So, um, so Jeff, I mean, obviously that's just a sample size of one, but that's, uh, it's, it, it, it's something you've seen in the wild for sure. So, um, but yeah, don't avoid them. They're part of kind of a, uh, they're part of the internet, they're part of uh, a natural link profile. Um, okay, so let's move on to uh, to another question here. We get a lot, I know that uh, w this one is is a lot, I know agencies probably get this question more than anyone, um, is, hey, how long will it take for me to see movement in rankings? How long will it take to have these great links that you're building um, start to kind of raise the, raise the tide? Uh, what do you think, Colby? Yeah, uh, let me give two extreme examples at, at each extreme, and then I'll add some nuance. So um, I have a client that uh, in uh, last year, beginning of last year, they uh, revamped their site. They entered sort of a new space and said, hey, we have new a new set of keywords that we want to target. And uh, when you look at what these keywords are, their head terms, you compare them against uh, SEMrush has a uh, keyword difficulty score. We compared them against... Um, uh, personal injury lawyer, personal injury attorney, and I just do that because it's regularly seen as a very um, uh, difficult keyword to go after. Oh, yes. It's cost per yes. click of 100 plus. Everyone <laughs> wants the organic. And what we found is that these keywords were more competitive on that score than personal injury lawyer. And uh, it's it took, uh, it took until uh, mid this year before we saw any movement on those rankings, before we saw them oh. come in at all. So it was like 15 months before right. we saw any change. And now we've started to see them, uh, you know, climb and stay in the rankings for those keywords. But uh, it's been um, it's been a long time. It took a long time. They were mm -hmm. very competitive. On the other end, um, we had an education client come in. They have a program that they want to see ranking for. They already saw some rankings around it, but they wanted to improve them. And so we designed a campaign by which we were able to get some very targeted links to their program, plus links to uh, content around that program that was you know, directly related to, to that subset. And uh, we started seeing real ranking increases within 60 days. So mm, wow. Yeah. So there we go. So those are the two extremes, right? Like <laughs> that's you, great. You wouldn't see usually in 60 days rankings um, unless all the scenarios are right. You know, they already have authority in the space. Some rankings are there. You can get a, uh, you know, we got like nine links directly to the program page. And then you've got the other side where it's completely new in a very competitive space. It's going to take a lot of links and a lot of time. Uh, usually when it comes down to our clients, 
uh, what we usually see is that um, within the first three months of a campaign, what you're seeing is that we have a strategy in place and we're getting you really good links. And that you can see that, hey, these links will bear out over time and, sh and should drive the results we want to see. In that three to six month time frame is really where we should start seeing some movement. That doesn't mean that stuff is moving from not ranking to page one, uh, but it might mean that we're seeing stuff move from the 80s to the, uh, uh, you know, the 40s or the, the 30s. And so usually that three to six month time frame. Now, let's go back. Uh, we'll just circle back around to that client that I said it took over a year to see on their, their rankings increase. Those were their most difficult rankings. We absolutely saw ranking increase on other key terms, uh, associated long tail stuff, you know, those sort of things, uh, much sooner than that, you know, year, year and a half. And usually it's, again, in that three to six month. It'll vary depending on, again, how authoritative the site already is, how long they've been in the space, the complexity of those keywords, long tail, short tail, very competitive, not very competitive. But uh, we like to say that in, at the end of six months, we can show some sort of improvement that as it bears out over time, um, will increase traffic, will uh, make the client money, and uh, will break even on what they've poured into link building services and then continue to make them profit on link building services. Excellent. Um, excellent. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, it's a really tough question because it's going to be different for everybody. There's there's going to be a case per case, you know, case by case basis. Your your footprint online is going to have, you know, your business's footprint online is going to have a lot to do with it uh, and the competitive, uh, you know, competitive nature of the niche and the industry. But I think that's a very good uh, thing to kind of uh, to kind of look at to, a way to approach that. So. All right, that's our that's the end of our uh, of our preloaded uh, questions, and so we have we've had some great questions rolling in from the audience here. So I'll just um, yeah, go I have, through. I have some I'd like to. All right, so you so you address. you got some you're looking through. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look. Um, so there was a really good one from uh, it's related to what we just went through, but it's from Andrew Dennis. It says, "How do you tie link building to business results? What are the primary metrics you track to determine success?" Great question. Yeah, so I mentioned my uh, my uh, education client specific program. Uh, we the way we design a campaign is to make it focused after that capacity. So we had the program page. We knew we couldn't build a whole bunch of links to that program page, but we thought we could build a few, and uh, we thought hey, there should be content. You should have written content around this program. We went and found it on the site and uh, said, hey, we can build links to this content as well. And uh, then the metrics we track around those are very simple. We track uh, the keywords associated with the page, and we came up with those keywords <clears throat> through a combination of what the client was already tracking, what we could see in, uh, and what we could see in SEM Rush that as we built links should improve the ranking on those keywords. And uh, then we track those. And then uh, I like to use uh, uh, Google Analytics querying the API via spreadsheets to pull in uh, traffic specifically on those pages so that we can see uh, as rankings increase, the, that organic traffic should increase as well. So for this specific client, when we talked on the phone last, we were looking at the rankings and we could see that the rankings had increased. We hadn't seen yet that it had attracted or organic traffic. So that's where we're looking now. It should attract that um, in the long term. Uh, at that point, we've gotten traffic to the client site um, for keywords that we have all agreed are relevant. So um, it's going to be somewhat up to them to now track that down to, you know, has it increased conversions, those sort of things. Page One Power isn't a CTR agency. So that's where we track our business results and say, hey, if we can get the right traffic to your site for the right keywords, you should see improvement. Yeah, I think traffic, uh, we've, we've kind of mentioned it a couple of times, but one thing I love uh, about link building too is that, uh, is that sometimes you'll see a traffic improvement to a certain page uh, or a certain piece of content before you start seeing the ranking improvements. Because if you get the if you get the right links in the right places that are in high visibility areas that have high amounts of relevant traffic from other domains that may funnel through you through that click, um, then that's another really good thing to kind of look at as well. So uh, before ranking uh, before rankings rather, we will often see traffic. Good. Uh, there's another one here. Uh, this one's from Devon. He says, <clears throat> is DA a good metric to focus on since it's not a real metric, but just a Moz metric? <laughs> uh, there's a couple ways to answer that question depending on like the focus on. So I'm going to answer both of them. Uh, the first one is focus on like when I'm site finding, when I'm uh, deciding if I'm going to reach out to a site for a link. <clears throat> 
I wouldn't say focus on, but um, it should probably be in the mix. I uh, I was a little hyperbolic in our Slack chat earlier today. I said something like, uh, um, the best way to, uh, the only thing you need to know about DA is to turn off your Moz bar. Um, <laughs> I was being a little hyperbolic, but essentially what I was getting at there is I think that people get so stuck on domain authority. And they, um, I had uh, someone tell me once that everything above X domain authority is good and everything below that is low quality. And I don't believe that. I think it is a flag. And so um, generally speaking, if you see something that is higher domain authority, it's a better site. Generally, if you see something that's lower, like a DA8, so to speak, um, it's probably something you want to stay away from. But you should still look into why is it that? Uh, you know, is there something going on that maybe will, will make me change my mind? So it's just an entry point. Now, the other way that people tend to focus on domain authority is when I'm building links, I should see my, if I'm doing a good job, I should see my domain authority go up. And that is, um, that's just absolute hogwash. Uh, Rand Fishkin did a, uh, like a, a forum post on Moz. Um, I don't know, it was probably earlier this year where he talked about domain authority. And one of the things he says is that you can build really good links and you can see ranking increases and yet see your DA deteriorate because it's in relation to what the rest of the internet is doing and what, you know, it might be that the sites at the top end radically increase their link portfolio. And so it caused your DA to, to go down. Um, that said, the one the one way that DA is worth tracking is in conjunction with your direct competitors. So um, I did this once for a client where he wanted me to track it. So I said, okay, let's do it in, in, in relation to your competitors. And so I set up his DA and I set up four or five competitors so that we could see uh, if uh, if all of your competitors plus you, if all of your DA increased at the same time, like that was just something that happened in Moz's index and, and uh, you all benefited from it. If their DA went down or stayed the same and you went up, hey, that's good. It means you got more links than they did and, and better links and so your DA went up. And then the versus being true. So um, is it a good metric to focus on? Uh, not to focus on. Is it something to keep in your toolbox? Yeah. Uh, excellent. Uh, I want to address a question from Anna. Uh, Anna asks, um, could nofollow links just be protection for the site linking uh, to avoid penalties, but still pass juice to the site linked to, uh, as, uh, no fall, as in nofollow is actually being good all around? Um, what do you think there, Colby? Um, I mean, it's, okay, so Google says things and sometimes we believe them. <clears throat> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we don't. Uh, one of the things they say is that nofollow does not pass link equity. Um, do I believe them? Yeah, I think so. Um, does that mean that they like literally do not follow the site and you know don't like go on to the site linking to and crawl it and all those sort of things? Um, not sure. I necessarily believe that. So, is is it actually being good all around? Uh, no, probably not. In fact, I think in most cases. Uh, people should just not use no follows at all. There are like some scenarios maybe where like you should absolutely use them if you've been you know paid for the link, it's an advertisement or something. You should probably use it if, I've seen some of these, right, where someone will say like, hey, people <clears throat> stole our content and have been scamming us, but we don't want to link over to it or we want to no follow a link over to it, like that's a good scenario. But um, by and large, I, I think people overuse no follow links. Yeah, I think I think so too because you can really overuse them because the way I've had it explained to me and, I, and I've kind of seen it uh, seen it uh, being talked about is that a, if you're if you're a domain owner if you're a site owner and you have a bunch of no follow links and let's say you no follow link no follow every in content blog link uh, you know uh, link in your blog right well as Google's kind of set it up a if you no follow something that means that you kind of don't trust that target that you're linking out to, that you you as a, as a site owner um, and you are telling your audience that you don't really trust what you're linking out to um, for one reason or another. And so why would you apply that you know, same level, that low trust signal to everything that you link out to? Um, and, and so that's, I, I think that's not a very good practice um, as, a, uh, as a site owner. Um, and so really only use that for specific situations where you where that trust, you don't want to have that trust signal uh, being communicated. Yeah. Um, here's another one. How long should you wait to respond to your first outreach attempt? 
uh, my opinion differs from that of some of our link builders. Probably, I think I've heard some mm-hmm. people say like you should wait seven days. <clears throat> I think you should wait three business days um, on the far end. And the way I came to that is uh, my own inbox, like something that I haven't responded to 72 hours ago. I'm much more likely just to delete it from my inbox or archive it and never respond to it. And so uh, I think you should wait about 72 hours. Um, now that's going to depend on uh, how many times you've uh, outreached and all those sort of things, which actually leads us into uh, the next question that was here. It sort of went along with it. it. said, what's a good number of emails to send before walking away from a target site? Um, I think three or four. Uh, we, I, I see that most commonly. If you get much above that, right, you're starting to get really annoying and you're going to be the, the guy who they say, hey, never contact me again. Take me off your list. Going to get really, really annoyed at you. Usually our outreach will be a uh, uh, first one is like the the pitch. The second one is, hey, I wanted to, to see if you uh, uh, got my email below. Did that make it through your inbox? Um, the third one and fourth ones are like, hey, hello, are you there? Um, sort of thing. Are these things even coming through? Uh, I see we use uh, Buzzstream um, on our end. And so you have relationship stages. You have attempting to reach and those sort of things. Usually, I think after the fourth one is when we will we'll outreach it. And then we'll just move it to to, uh, you know, they didn't respond to us. And then if they do respond, it'll jump back up into replied. But, uh, three to four, uh, if you're going beyond four, uh, you're going to be the really annoying person who uh, gets an angry email, I think. Excellent. Uh, another question here from Ryan. Uh, with all the spam these days, is email becoming an outdated method of outreach? Uh, thoughts on outreach through social media or via phone? Hmm. This is a, that's a good one. I like that approach. <clears throat> Um, outdated might be the wrong word, certainly more competitive. Um, so I think that, um, I've talked with different link builders on our floor, some of the best link builders, and, uh, they use social media quite a bit. It seems mm. where they will outreach that way mm. and, uh, really get some good responses that way. It has other obstacles, right? Um, depending on the social media platform and, and, uh, the, the way in which you're outreaching. But, um, yeah, I definitely think that, uh, social media and phone are really good ways to build links, particularly if, uh, let's say you've sent an email or two and you haven't gotten a response and you just want to pick up the phone and say, you know, hey, Bob, on the other end, I I sent you an email and wanted to see if that came through. Uh, Even if it, you know, did come through and they just, you know, barely glanced at it. um, I think that could cause them to say, oh, I think I did see something and look at it right there. And it adds uh, one of the things email doesn't necessarily have with it that I think a, a phone conversation does is an air of uh, um, uh, authority and what's the word um, like this person really exists. Well, like kind of right? veritas, like yeah, yeah, because with an email you can't really look up who that's coming from, right? It, it could be a random string of numbers at gmail.com. Well, you don't know who, who's behind. And that. let's be honest, I can go create an email account right now and send an email. Right. If exactly. I pick up the phone, <laughs> if I pick up the phone, you're at you're hearing my voice, yep. right? Um, yep. So, yeah, I think that's a, a pretty good way to build a link, um, uh, particularly if, like, you are link building, uh, you know, you're not at an agency, you work in a company, and uh, you want to build some links, and you can pick it up and say, hey, this is, uh, you know, this is Susan at XYZ Company, I sent you an email, wanted to see if you got that, wanted to talk about a link, and uh, uh, it could lead to other partnerships as well. Yeah, I think, it, you know, one of the most, uh, you know, uh, clearly um, proven ways to be successful with link building is to always be hustling, right? Always be hustling and always look for different ways and avenues that you can communicate to uh, communicate your questions and your uh, and your messages to people. And if you see a phone number right there next to someone's contact uh, info right next you know, on their contact page, um, and you haven't been getting email responses, then go ahead and just pick up the phone. Uh, you know, kind of hustle and always be always be looking for different ways to kind of get a hold of people. There's a uh, there's a question up here that I skipped earlier, but I wanted to go back to. It it's, says, uh, "What is the hardest aspect of link building?" Um, I think it's the people. <laughs> uh, link building is a. I mean, it, I said this before. It's like a very human oriented approach, and so. We've said this all along, like everything we've talked about when it comes to outreach is like, how do I position this in such a way that I can get the attention of a person on the other end of the email or the phone call or whatever? And it it really is the people um, 
that that makes link building the hardest. You know, everybody's busy getting their attention, um, having a conversation that shows them the value of linking to your client or to your site. Um, and I think that can get, uh, you know, it, it can get frustrating sometimes. I remember, uh, you know, back when I was a link builder, it, it'd get frustrating when someone would come back and say, hey, I really love your article. Why don't you give me 500 bucks to publish it? <laughs> like, nah, I'm not going to do that, you know. Um, so it's, it's definitely the people and uh, uh, building links, reaching out to get links. It's as, as uh, much psychology as it is, um, you know, technology. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Um, that's a good one. So another question here, uh, are link exchanges bad for SEO? Uh, what do you think? Mm, no, I think a good link, ex a link exchange done correctly um, can add value. It veers more to the, the marketing value <clears throat> rather than the um, SEO value, um, but I don't think it's bad for SEO. Uh, there are scenarios, if, if you're going out and the only way that you're building links is like, I'll give you a link and you give me a link. Uh, that might hurt you. That's going to create an unnatural pattern that um, probably becomes very easy for Google to pick up on. But if there's a, a, a link exchange that really comes down to like, um, hey, I can link to you in this way that will really add value and you can link to me in this way, really add value and you're, you're, you know, you're swapping almost in a way that, that does more than just SEO. Maybe it's uh, um, going to drive visitors to each other's site directly through because you're going to do a, a, a marketing effort right along with it, then, uh, you know, there's some real value to that. Um, or we'll even just see areas where it's like, um, uh, hey, by you linking here and us linking here, like there is some value in that. So it, it, no, it's not bad for SEO. Um, I also do not recommend it at a broad scale or as a tactic for garnering links. Um, I always advise clients to use it in a scenario where it's going to bring value to the business in other ways as well. Yeah, it's really tough to do, and it's tough to do correctly um, in a lot of ways. But I think I think a really common one that I think that that can be good um, if done well is um, is kind of like a if you're two companies that are in a similar a you know similar industry and you want to do maybe I, I guess post on your site and maybe there's a link back to a piece of content on my site in that guest post and then maybe down the road you guest post on my site and then maybe in that content there's a link back uh, back as well so that's kind of a link exchange in a sense but there's no real quid pro quo necessarily and it's to organic you know it, organically in content to relevant uh, pieces so I think that's a good take as well um, excellent. Well, I think one last question here as we kind of wrap things up. Um, the question is, uh, what is the most, uh, what is the most creative, wacky outreach tactic that you've seen someone use to get a link? That's a good question. I think we had a guy <laughs> back in the day, and you know who I'm talking about, uh, who like, if he didn't get a response by like the third time, I think his last email would be a cat gif. <laughs> that was my answer. Yeah, that yeah. was. <laughs> and uh, he occasionally got a response from that. Yeah. Like it brought humor. Mm -hmm. It brought, uh, you know, there's a human on the other end of this tonight. and uh, yeah that actually sometimes he, he didn't lead with that I don't think it was always no. like hey you haven't responded I'm gonna try something that's a uh, sort of you know patch Adams sort of you yes know, uh, surprise someone and uh, I always thought that was pretty clever um, uh, another one kind of along that same route is is a, a very successful link builder uh, here and she would uh, uh, she would title um, uh, title emails with like the opening of a joke <laughs> um, so, like, you know, like, what did the green grape say to the to the red grape? And then you have to open up the email to get the answer <laughs> to the joke or the riddle. Um, and I thought that was pretty clever. Dad, uh, dad jokes <laughs> in email form. Exactly. Dad <laughs> jokes uh, make the world go round for sure. <laughs> Um, and that's the conclusion that we can, that we've come to uh, with this Q&A section. Um, well, uh, we're just going to go ahead and as we kind of wrap things up, I just want to just do a quick poll question here. We just have one poll question today that we're going to uh, that we are going to get to everybody. So, all right. So the poll question is: uh, Would you like to know more, a little bit more about what Page One Power uh, can do for you, and uh, in terms of link building, in terms of uh, site strategy content um, we really we, we're, we really offer it all uh, we're happy to help you with uh, with your online uh, marketing efforts especially in the link building uh, area so we're very happy to hear from you um, so excellent so that is our poll there I'll just go ahead and close it as we kind of wrap things up for the day 
Um, and I thank you everybody that has uh, participated in the voting here. So excellent. Um, so thank you so much. So some uh, Colby, some parting thoughts. Uh, parting thoughts. Frequently asked questions on link building. Um, what's uh, what's what are your thoughts? Um, you know, as we kind of wrap things up here. Yeah, uh, there are so many questions here that we answer. Um, somewhat less concretely than we would like, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's context here, and there are lots of things that play in here. So uh, we have that Ask an Expert section on our website. Mm -hmm. Please use it. It goes to uh, uh, right here. Our project managers sit right next to our, our marketing department, and so as these things come in, we see them. And uh, we're happy to answer those those questions. We're happy to do more of these webinars and uh, uh, try to get as concrete and specific as we can. So, um, um, yeah. Free of charge, obviously, free of charge. So, uh, and that URL here, I'll just back it up a little bit here so you can see that URL in the bold at the bottom on this slide um, is uh, patreonpower.com forward slash ask an expert. And that's uh, with uh, dashes between the words there, ask an expert. I think um, we've thrown around the idea of uh, um, taking some of those and writing content and like, publishing oh, it as absolutely. a resource. So, oh, um, yeah, yeah, use it. Absolutely. I highly recommend it um, as well. Uh, my parting thought here is that is that questions, um, you know, link building is, uh, it, it, there's so much to link building. There's so much to learn. And it's such an involved process that, um, that never be afraid to ask questions. Um, and so, and so even if it's something that maybe you think might, uh, you know, people already know, or people are, is a, or, you know, is, is a very commonly known thing, um, ask anyway, because, you know, link building is, is, is not easy, even on the best of times. Um, and so continue exploring. I encourage ex exploration, always asking those questions. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this has been another edition of the Page One Power panel webinar series. Uh, we're happy that you could join us today. Recordings will be available on our website and on our YouTube channel shortly after this broadcast, along with all of our past webinars um, as well. Keep an eye out for more exciting webinars in the future from Page One Power. And remember, link unto others as they would link unto you.